All right, now I'll invite um, Mr. Joshua Geese on behalf of Lime to speak, and after which it will be followed by a video of NCB's Capital Quest. Thank you very much and good morning. I think we have a presentation. We've, uh, we've heard this morning that there's significant uh, and transformational change happening within the, uh, within the technology industry. Um, I'm here to tell you it's at a, a pivotal point. Um, it has never been at this stage before and specifically the cloud. I'm sure everybody has heard about the cloud. We heard Amazon mention this morning. I'm going to help over the next few minutes explain to you how the major technology industries and companies are forcing this change whether you like it or not. So uh, we don't want to be left behind. Uh, we also don't want decisions to be made for us. However, that's actually happening. And, and to be honest, that has been happening for a while. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. So if anybody's paid attention to the latest earnings or the latest discussions from the major technology vendors in the industry, everybody's heard of IBM. Everybody's heard of Microsoft, everybody's heard of Oracle, everybody's heard of HP. In fact, most of you are using their technology today. What you may not be aware of if you haven't focused heavily on the direction of their innovation, on the direction of their service programs, of their technology programs, is that they have made a shift, not making, they have made a shift, and this is why. When we see that IBM's earnings are tanking, and we see that Oracle's shares, and these, these, uh, these news clippings are two, three weeks old. This is today. When we see that HP's earnings are, are having significant downside, something happens in the industry. And the cloud is what's impacting this. So when we take a look at the direction that these technology companies are headed, they are changing how they deliver technology to deliver it with the cloud, to, to change their actual business models, change their service delivery models, and that's a direct impact. If you own their technology, you're going to own their technology differently. You're going to own it as a, as a service provider. You're going to procure it from them as, as in a service provider model. I'm going to talk for a couple minutes about how you should engage with your service provider and how the industry is ranking service providers. It's no longer about working with suppliers or vendors. It's about service providers. It's about procuring uh, service offerings and solutions and how you can best benefit from that. So here we see IBM investing $2 billion in SoftLayer clearly looking to modify all of their technology programs so that it's delivered from the cloud. SoftLayer is essentially a cloud platform. And today, if you invest in IBM equipment, you are investing in SoftLayer. You are investing in the cloud. So whether you like it or not, congratulations, you are using the cloud. If you have a smartphone, you're using the cloud. And I know that's a really easy statement to make, but your data is in the cloud. Your data is in Cupertino, California. Okay? 100%. It's not unequivocal. When we see HP splitting into two organizations, one of the major global technology companies that's been around since the beginning, but they're actually splitting into two organizations so that they can focus on cloud-delivered services. When you look at the direction um, or, or who's operating that organization, uh, you see that Meg Whitman is focusing on the cloud side and hiring other people to run the printing and, and other services. IBM sold off their server, server group. So IBM no longer makes servers. If you own an IBM server and you go to renew your uh, service agreement or your warranty, it's not IBM anymore. The vendors are changing. They're becoming different service providers. I want to help you, just I only have a couple minutes. I want to help you through analyzing who you should work with and how you should analyze those companies. 
I don't know if everybody can read this, but a really strong statement right at the bottom. I probably should not have highlighted it. This is from the uh, CTO of Bank of America. And the <laughs> statement reads, I worry that some of the partners that we work with closely won't be able to make the journey. And he's referring to the suppliers and the vendors that Bank of America purchases. Billions of dollars in IT spend, and you have the CTO saying, I don't think the companies we're working with are going to be able to make that journey. So do we have companies embracing the cloud? We do in, in huge forms and fashion. 80% of companies are currently engaged with some form of cloud technology to back up their data. 80%. That's pretty much everybody. In some way, shape, or form is leveraging cloud technology to back up, to replicate, to store their data. I'm going to help you through that. Gartner, uh, which most people uh, should be directly or indirectly familiar with, is the largest technology consulting company in the world. Essentially, Gartner releases what's called magic quadrants. Those magic quadrants are um, analysis, takes about a year to do them, but they are the gold standard in the industry global gold standard as to which vendors, which suppliers, which technologies companies need to be evaluating. There's thousands and thousands of vendors, but Gartner evaluates all of those vendors, evaluates all of those technologies and creates a magic quadrant, the gold standard. They released a magic quadrant a few months ago in April on disaster recovery as a service or DRAS. And for the first time, they came out and they said to most private organizations have a relationship with Gartner. And they said to their customers, you need to be aware of this. 80% of you are already using it. You have to understand who to engage with and how to engage with them. 40 page report, and this is page number one, first paragraph. Again, it's probably difficult for people to read in the back, so I'll read it for you. The strategic planning assumption. First page, first paragraph. The one message they want you to read. By 2018, three years, about two and a half years now, the number of organizations using disaster recovery as a service will exceed the number of traditional vendors using recovery services. So when we combine the difficulty that traditional suppliers and vendors are having, the first slide, the IBMs, the HPs, the Oracles, the direction that those technology vendors are going, we look at what Gartner is saying, this makes sense. All of this is coming together because we see the direction that these technology companies are headed. Now Gartner also um, recognized that there are 170 different companies offering DRAS offering some form of backup and disaster recovery. And I usually put up this slide and I usually wish good luck to everybody in trying to help understand and analyze and rank and, and filter these companies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a head start. 40 page report is summarized in three different sections and three different uh, recommendations at the end. The first one is to find a DRAS, a DR provider, that has a roadmap that's focused in the direction that you're going. If you want to protect your data, if you want to replicate your data, f focus on a, uh, a service provider that has that roadmap as well. The second is a vendor's ability to provide a complete solution. We're not, it's no longer about hardware and software, it's about solutions. Make sure you're working with a service provider that has that capability. This is Gartner's words, not mine. This is copy and paste from the Gartner report. The last one is to identify um, low risk opportunities to migrate servers, migrate systems into the cloud. Don't go with your mission critical systems to begin with. Go with systems that are easy to migrate, that are gonna take the, work, the workload off of your IT managers and your IT personnel. If you have 2,000 servers, and, or 200 servers, and you migrate 150 of them that are not mission critical, all of a sudden you have an entire IT staff that's focused on 50. They can actually do better things. They can focus on applications for your uh, company. They can focus on, 
on building better productivity, not on backing data up. Give the low quality stuff, outsource it. That's what the cloud is about. Handing off uh, technology and solutions into somebody else's environment. Now, a really important thing happened. When the Magic Quadrant was released, uh, Gartner looked at 170 different providers. They boiled it, these are global providers. They boiled it down to 25. In, the, in this 25, you have Amazon, you have Microsoft, you have IBM, HP, EMC, Verizon. You have multinational, multi-billion dollar companies. And three quarters of them failed to meet Gartner's standards. We're talking really big companies here. Microsoft, Google, Amazon failed to meet Gartner's standards set out for delivering disaster recovery as a service. This is the list of the ones that made it. Way too small. I can't even read that. But if you look at some of the, some of the leaders, IBM is in there. SunGuard is in there, which is not a surprise because they owned the disaster recovery space for 30 years. You have some new players like NTT Communications. At the bottom uh, left-hand side, which is essentially Gartner's way of saying, these are the companies that are behind, and the top uh, right-hand side is the companies that are leading. In the very middle, I don't think there's a pointer here, but in the very middle, there is Columbus Business Solutions. For the first time ever, a regional service provider was ranked almost in the leadership quadrant, a hair away from the leadership quadrant. This is a miraculous accomplishment. They beat out uh, Verizon. They beat out VMware. They beat out Amazon, Microsoft. A huge accomplishment and many reasons for that. So three, three items I want to highlight very, very quickly. The first is that Columbus Business Solutions scored well above the median in actually managing disaster recoveries. Important to remember that, they actually beat out IBM. They, they provided support for more disaster recoveries than IBM did. The second item is that the reference customers rated Columbus Business Solutions as the, the highest quality from customer, uh, customer, service, uh, customer satisfaction. This again is all directly out of the Gartner report. And the third and probably most important is that Columbus Business Solutions scored the highest customer reference out of everybody. So you are among good company. You have a company that has scored incredibly well in the Magic Quadrant, something that has beat out major multi-billion dollar companies, and you also have co a, a company that has scored the highest from customer satisfaction. I'm going to pause there because I know I'm out of time, and I would like to thank everybody very much.